this is Aditya Aluwalia from Finstructor and we'll start the review on the FRM program uh, with the first topic on foundations of risk management uh, which covers the building blocks of uh, risk management. So uh, a lot of what we'll be studying uh, in this first review we will cover in detail throughout the FRM curriculum. So it's okay if there is uh, some concept that you don't immediately grasp, um, it will be covered in a lot of detail later. Uh, so we'll start with an introduction to risk management. And we'll begin by defining the term risk. The risk generally refers to uncertainty or the probability of an unfavorable outcome or the probability of a loss. So, so risk is the uncertainty surrounding outcomes and generally it has a negative connotation that is it, it relates to negative outcomes or the probability of loss as we mentioned. However, please note that there is a natural trade-off between risk and return. So risk also means the possibility of upsides and higher risk opportunities also have the potential for higher returns and vice versa. The risk is uncertainty and um, generally relates to the probability of a loss. Now, important to understand is it's not necessarily about the size of the loss. So the important concern here is the variability or the volatility in our profits or losses or in the daily movements of uh, or, or the monthly movements of our returns. So we are additionally especially concerned about unexpected losses that can rise to unexpectedly high levels. So these will be extreme events and these will be extreme risks that we have to be additionally careful about. Risk management considers how a business or an entity consciously determines how much risk it is willing to take to earn the returns associated with that risk. So a part of the risk we might want to hedge, we might want to transfer, we might want to avoid, but of course we have to assume some risk to earn a return. So that entire process is referred to as risk management. Risk taking refers to the active acceptance of incremental risk in the pursuit of incremental gains. So yeah, if we might think that our risk is not sufficient uh, or the expected returns are too low, we might take on additional risk. The curriculum defines 10 building blocks. Uh, we will go through these in more detail throughout this review. Maybe not in exactly the same order, but it will be the process of risk management, identifying the risks, expected, unexpected losses, extreme losses, risk factor breakdown, systemic risks, conflicts of interest, topology of risks, risk aggregation, balancing risk and reward, and enterprise risk management. So we'll go through these topics. Um, so to start the building blocks, uh, what is the risk management process? It is a formal series of actions designed to de determine if the perceived reward justifies the expected risks. So again, uh, several blocks of this process. First, we need to identify the risks, which we'll study next. Then we need to measure and manage the risks that we have identified. Understand and distinguish between expected and unexpected risks. Address the correlations or the relationships between these various risks. Develop a mitigation strategy and monitor and evaluate the strategy as needed. Now the first step is that of risk identification. So there are many ways to do it. And the first and relatively straightforward is to brainstorm with the senior officials or brainstorm as as executives of the company that what are the risks or where do the risks uh, come from so let's assume that i am an apple vendor or a fruit vendor and i have to identify my risks so there will be various risks uh, that i may not be able to sell all my apples in a particular day the delivery might be late or the apples might be bad. So as a business leader or as, as, as a business executive, you can brainstorm and identify what are the risks in your business. You can have more quantitative approaches, uh, which we'll study in a lot of detail. Uh, for example, we can analyze our actual loss data from the past to get a sense of how much the loss has been and how frequent it has been during different days or different weeks or different months. 
scenario analysis is another way of uh, identifying risks. That is, we assume some hypothetical situations and then try to see what will be our profit or loss in that situation. For instance, if it is a rainy day, then how does that impact my sales? If uh, it is a holiday or if it is uh, a day when there's a public event scheduled, it's like a foreign apple vendor, for instance. We can consider various scenarios and try to see what will be the profit or loss uh, in a given scenario. So at the end of the identification, generally we would try to identify and place our risk into four categories or one of these four categories. That is um, expected losses, unexpected losses, known unknowns and unknown unknowns. So generally expected and unexpected losses are losses that can be quantified, whereas unknowns are, uh, are risks that cannot be quantified. So again, for an, for an Apple vendor or a vegetable vendor, uh, expected loss, for instance, would be that four apples in a day are not sold. This is expected. It's, it's, it's a business risk that I'm willing to take. I price it in the other apples that I'm selling, that at the end of the day, some apples will not be sold. It's an expected loss. Unexpected loss would be something like in a particular day, 10 apples are not sold, for instance. Uh, maybe another fruit is in uh, season or um, for, 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 for whatever reason, people are, are, don't, don't choose to buy apples on a particular day. They, they, they want to buy other vegetables or other fruits. So it's, it's also an unexpected loss. Generally, four are not sold, but unexpectedly, maybe 10 could not be sold. There could be known unknowns. For instance, it could be a rainy day and people don't uh, step out of the house or 20 apples are not sold or, 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 or maybe it's even tough to quantify all apples are not sold. So it's a known unknown that yeah, this event can happen, but we don't know if it will rain on, on which day or we cannot really plan for this uh, event as a business. Unknown unknowns can also be there. For instance, uh, there is uh, a, a, a virus that is uh, spread uh, in the country and then there's a lockdown so uh, because of which uh, the entire business is shut so again this is an unknown unknown and uh, a lot of the world is living through it so yeah it's uh, it, it's a good example of that so a lockdown sort of a situation so that's um, what we try to do that we identify that if we start a a business there will be all these risks there will be apples not sold some days even more will not be sold there will be rainy days there can be some events which will shut down the business so the next step is risk identification and this identification process will culminate in a four-way decision that is the generally that is the company might decide to either avoid the risk that is by selling uh, the product uh, line or by avoiding certain markets or jurisdictions so yeah I, the, the vendor in our case might decide that okay this apple's business is not a good business it's too uncertain so he might avoid the business entirely he can retain the risk so he says yes it's okay the four apples uh, uh, i cannot sell but that's fine i can price the other apples and still make a reasonable profit so i can retain the risk and uh, hope to generate a return and price it uh, price the expected losses um, into my business i can mitigate the risk that is, I can have uh, a partnership with someone by saying that, okay, whatever is my unsold apples, I will sell it to you or you can make it for making jam or something. You know, I can have, um, have at, at a discounted price, I can sell it to another supplier or, 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 or another user of uh, apples. I can transfer the risk to a third party. That is, I can, I can tell my supplier that, okay, whatever is um, not sold, you can take it back so I can have a structured product or I can use some derivatives uh, to transfer the risk. I will study this in more detail in, 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 in the curriculum. And we'll also mention about some challenges in this whole process of uh, risk management. Uh, even, even though we might follow everything step by step uh, as we discussed and, and, and hope that we will go right, but still uh, a lot of challenges exist and things might not work exactly as we plan. First of all, risk must be sufficiently dispersed among willing and able participants in the economy. So, and this is this is also related to point four. That is, um, risk may not risk management may not be effective on an overall economic basis because it involves transferring risk from one party to another. So, if 
all the risk is concentrated to a few parties, as we saw in the crisis of 2007 and 9, that some some banks like um, Lehman Brothers, uh, erstwhile Lehman Brothers, or some insurance companies were underwriting all the risk. Then, even though we may think that we have protected ourselves by buying insurance, uh, it may not be the case because uh, the insurer itself may default. So if the ability of the risk protection provider, so to say, comes into question, then we all might be at, still be at risk even though we may think that we have managed our risk or we have transferred it to someone else. And we've seen this repeatedly in history and um, every few months. Uh, in fact, uh, you, we read about some case, small or big, that the risk management has failed to consistently assist in preventing market disruptions or preventing financial accounting fraud due to corporate governance failures or, or other failures of the sort. And a lot of times the use of complex instruments, complex derivatives uh, resulted in overstating the financial position. Uh, so in, in, in such cases, uh, it was not possible to correctly ascertain the risk or co correctly ascertain or apply the risk management tools to begin with. So yeah, these are some challenges which will hinder the process that we just uh, discussed. Uh, so we should be aware of this.